In April 2021, I got this old 1988 Harley uh, Softail and it came without a motor because the previous owner forgot to refill the motor oil and he bricked the engine totally. So I thought that's the right base to make my project electric Harley. And as you can probably see, uh, all the parts are in a pretty good condition, so that's the moment to start. The very first part to make was the battery box. I made some cardboard box models for the batteries and measured everything and looked how they fit into the frame of the motorbike and then I started welding. The battery pack here was the first part that was completely finished. It consists of this um, steel frame and the aluminium plates around are glued on the st uh, onto the steel frame. And you can also see the removable cover with the rivets around. That's also an uh, aluminium plate with some brackets around it. Here is how the batteries are placed. We have five batteries on top and four on the bottom. That's nine in total. Each battery has about 12 volts or 11.1. That gives us 110 volt battery pack voltage. That's the box below the battery pack. It contains the main relay with the thick wires, as you can see and also the current sensor where the white wire goes through. And this is the completed battery pack. You can see the thick wires going from the positive down into the battery box and from the negative pole. And the flat ribbon cable is the communication cable from the battery management module. Uh, over this cable it measures voltage and temperature of the individual cells. The first chain configuration was a little bit special because the motor was a little bit too high. Uh, the shaft of the motor, the turning point or the pivot point of the rear axle and uh, the rear axle itself should be in one line and the motor was a little bit too high so I was worried that the chain would come loose when I sit on the bike but it turned out that was not necessary. In fact on my first test ride I noticed that the short chain here uh, was going mo uh, hotter than 100 degrees celsius and uh, that was way too hot and uh, it lost all its lubrication and everything. So I decided to get rid of this extra chain and go directly from the rear wheel to the motor and it turned out that it works pretty well. Here we are at the first motor and controller auto configuration. Here is the new configuration without the extra chain and it also runs much quieter without the, well, extra chains and gears. Problem with electric motorbikes is you can't put them into gear because there is no gearbox. So 
your bike will roll away when you leave it. The solution for the problem is the bullet brake. You pull your brake handle, you push that button and your brake will be uh, engaged for a very long time. It's also useful for normal motorbikes. Another problem with building stuff is when you drill a hole, the chips will fly around and probably land somewhere where it's uh, difficult to get them out. But if you place a couple of magnets around, they will collect all the chips and they can be cleaned away easily. And I've also built this little wheel lifter here. It's a standard car check, a cheap one. And I welded two uh, massive uh, steel plates on the top and then the bottom. And that's a very good tool if you have to install the rear wheel or uh, if you want to remove it. As with every electric vehicle, you also need a charger. And I took this wooden box here, which is very old, it's before World War II. And uh, because I didn't like the plastic top cases that exist, and yeah, I think it looks pretty nice. And that's everything that needs to go inside the box. And here we see how it looks when everything is installed including a long cable that reaches everywhere to the next power outlet. Because I wanted to have my motorbike street legal, I needed to go for a couple of tests and checks. And here we are at the EMC test center, where they check everything electric, including radiation from the bike, radiation that gets to the bike and to see how it reacts and if everything is safe and sound. They even have a funny carousel so they can measure radiation from the bike from every side. Here you can see this microphone-like device that's a special antenna which is connected with a fiber optic cable, very expensive stuff. And here you see how my bike gets bombarded with RF energy, just to see if it, uh, if it works under these conditions or if it breaks down or whatever. Well, the test results were pretty good. Um, I had to install some ferrite beads around the cables and also the safety switch here that uh, makes it impossible to drive away while the charger is plugged in. Then I had to cover all the open contacts because they were in reach of a metallic test finger. And also all the cables needed to be orange, orange at least uh, those with high voltage on it. And here we finally are in summer 2024. The motorbike is ready. It has its license plate. It's street legal. Every test is okay. And I can drive around as much as I want. And that's probably something for another video some drive uh, experience. Thanks for watching. By the way, that's how electric motorbikes look from professional manufacturers. This one is an example from, from BMW. And I must say, I like mine a little bit better than this one.